ladies and gentlemen, Kevin Spacey. I want to set a scene, 1943, Miss Hewitt's drama class. A shy girl stands stiffly in a corner while other girls chat and giggle and laugh. And when the drama teacher enters the classroom, she asks each girl in turn to say why she wants to act. One says, well, it's better than ballet. <laughs> Another says, my mother tells me it will give me poise. The shy girl in the corner lifted her quiet gray eyes to meet her teachers and said simply, it's my life. It wasn't long after that day in 1943 that Julie Harris stepped out onto a Broadway stage and began to fulfill the purpose of her life as surely as one is called to the priesthood. Those who know her best and who have performed with her have seen her draw herself into her characters, filing down the heels of the shoes she will wear on stage so that her walk will have just the cant and camber of the woman she will be playing, shrinking inside her woman's body to play a girl and then aging before our very eyes. For those of us who have chosen a life on the stage, Julie Harris's story is a holy text. For her inspiration, the courage of her honesty, and how deeply she has shared with us the place from where her life flows, we are eternally grateful. She was equal parts light and shadow, the daughter of a cultured Michigan family. She was being groomed for a life of privilege except she felt shy and awkward. She was good at make-believe. When I acted in school plays, she said, I wasn't shy at all. Summers at a theater camp in Colorado readied her to take on her dream. Hopeful going to the actor's studio. A bit player in a handful of shows. Then she was cast opposite the great Ethel Waters. She played a 12-year-old tomboy, orphaned and lost, caught between her bravado and her tears. It was the triumph of the season. But what mattered most, said Julie, was that my life in the theater had begun. The next season on Broadway, she was nightclubbing her way through decadent Berlin. I saw him in a cafe in Berlin. Well? She went from child to floozy without losing a beat, collecting her first Tony Award. She was the most acclaimed young actress in America. I want to inhabit my character, she said, to bring them alive. Every night I pray to be truthful. The movies found her and cast her opposite James Dean as a ministering angel. Do you think I'm bad? I don't know. Because <laughs> I guess I don't know what is good and what's bad. She acted in over 65 films and television specials and made touring the country her life's work. 
On Broadway, she won her fifth Tony Award, portraying the poet Emily Dickinson, the role she took to every state in the Union. Well, in a way, the stories are true. I believe in truth, but I think it can be slanted just a little. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? <laughs> tell all the truth, but tell it slant. She has left us a remarkable gallery of brave and bewildered souls. Acting isn't what she does. It is who she is. There's a tradition in the theater that when the actor and the audience have all gone home and the theater is dark, we leave a single light burning on the stage. It's called the ghost light. It's meant to ward away ghosts, or depending on your point of view, to warm and welcome the spirits who roam around an empty theater. I'm Helen Mirren, and I'm very proud to be here. I'm Alec Baldwin. And I'm Mary Louise Parker. Julie Harris played my mother on the TV series Knots Landing. And each day on the set, she'd give us all a master class in the art of fine acting. I remember going to see her in the off-Broadway play, The Fiery Furnace, and waiting for this theatrical legend to make her entrance. But when she came on, what you saw quite simply was the heart and soul of her character. Tonight, we celebrate you, Ms. Harris, and the art of acting and actors everywhere. We who perform come to understand that acting for the stage is, well, it's just a miracle of moments, never to be seen again. We're sculptors who sculpt in snow. This small, soft-spoken lady has done several one-woman shows alone on the stage for two hours at a stretch. Eight shows a week, week after week. She says it's like climbing the rock face of a mountain. It requires determination and stamina. If you don't have a strong presence, you have to learn it. Learn how to reach from the first row all the way to the last. You have to learn to say, here I am. Julie Harris wrote of the actress's constant need to overcome fear. One of her favorite scenes is from The Lark, when Joan of Arc has to face her fears. What do you do when you get scared, the Dauphin asks Joan. Act as if I wasn't, she replies. It's that simple, try it. Say to yourself, yes, I'm afraid, but it's nobody's business. So you go on, you go on. And that's what you do, says Julie, you go on. Julie's friend and director, Charles Nielsen Riley, recalled the time he escorted Julie to the White House to a state dinner in honor of the Queen of England. Well, the Queen came out, you know, under the television lights, crown jewels, garter, dripping with, with jewels, sparkling like a Christmas tree. And everyone went, oh, ah. Oh. Julie went, ah, oh, I could play it better. <laughs> Julie, we thank you for giving actors a standard by which to measure ourselves. And we recall your memorable words. I'm sure if the world were ending tomorrow, I would run out and go to the theater. Our 1993 Kennedy Center honoree, Stephen Sondheim, wrote a song that speaks to every aspiring actress. Just a Broadway baby Walking off my 
tired feet Pounding 42nd Street To be in a show to be on some marquee all oh, twinkling lights a spark to pierce the dark for battery park to washington heights someday maybe all my dreams will be repaid heck i'd even play the maid to be an Christine Baranski, Leslie Uggams, Tyne Daly, Karen Ziemba, Michelle Lee. Kennedy Center Honors, a celebration of the performing arts, sponsored by...